<clears throat> All right, let's see if this is working. I'm hopeful that everything is working and that we can have visuals and whatnot. Okay, I think we're good. <clears throat> anyway, hello everybody! Welcome to another edition of Gina has no idea what to stream, so she got to the point of near tears and just picked a game that everybody's probably going to hate. I'm Gina, aka the Gina Chew, but this is one of my favorite games of all time. It's funny to watch in the way that we're going to die over and 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 over, and over again. Uh, this is NetHack. What up, Frags? So NetHack is a roguelike, which um, is the name for a subgenre of games based on the old game Rogue, which is a, like a randomly generated dungeon crawler. A uh, Rogue Legacy is also a roguelike. It's a big kind of genre. Hey, Cookie, what's going on? <laughs> that was a very funny typo, Cookie. It's all good. I appreciate you popping in and say hi. We don't get to see enough of you these days. So this game is all in ASCII font, and the plot is questionable at best. It's more about just trying to overcome a lot of um, a lot of the the hurdles that you're going to run into as far as different puzzles, different levels. Um, it's a very, very deep game. Um, the, basic ge ga uh, the basic gist of the game is that we are a warrior chosen by a specific god, which gets assigned to us when we pick uh, our alignment and our, uh, our race and all that stuff. And basically our job is to... Uh, get to the bottom of the Dungeons of Doom, get something called the Amulet of Yendor, exit back out and up to the astral planes and shit, and basically sacrifice the Amulet of Yendor to our respective god, and then be lauded as a hero. Um, I've played this game gotta be somewhere in the two to three hundred times range. I have yet to even get the Amulet of Yendor. It is a hard, hard, hard game. It is unforgiving. It is punishing. It is cheaty as all fuck. And as this game goes on and on, you're going to start seeing how much bullshit this game tries to pull. So basically, we cheat back. <laughs> There's a huge um, community of people who have played this game who have figured out uh, the mathematical equations where certain probabilities happen, um, ways that you can figure out how much stuff costs, how much stuff sells for, and how you can identify stuff by their price. There is just so much information out there, and we will be making liberal use of it if we decide to continue streaming this game. I don't know how you guys are really going to be into it. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, so hopefully you guys will enjoy it. I see that Gwen Pie is here. Hello, Gwen Stacy. I'm so happy to see you. Uh, Gwen is excited. Gwen is excited. She wants to see me cry. Okay, so Aradell is my char is my character's name. Um, I already logged in. Um. You can watch games in progress, which is always kind of fun, but there are two versions of NetHack. There's 3.4.3 and 3.6.0. I have been playing 3.4.3. 3.6.0 is a l is a newer version. It's got some changes. Some of them I like. A lot of them I don't think I've stumbled upon yet. Um, oh dear God. Every time I go to stream, my friends have to message 5,000 times. I can't get a hold of them at any other point. And then they just start messaging me a thousand times. I swear to God, life is out to troll me. <laughs> okay, so I apologize for all the digging all over the place. But, oh dear God. Oh my God. Okay. Um, so, what we are going to do is... Uh, should I do three? Let's, let's play a game of three six. Let's see what we can do. Alright, here we go. Alright, so let's play. Alright, here we go. Yes, this game is copyright 1985. 
Yes, it is still being updated to this day. Uh, that's how hardcore old this game is. Um, yeah. So, the game asks, Shall I pick a character's race, role, gender, and alignment for you? The answer is, uh, absolutely no, never, ever, dear God, please do not ever choose anything for me. This game will fuck you at every opportunity, so no. Um, certain roles are easier than others, certain roles are much harder than others. We're going to start with probably the easiest combination, which is a Dwarven Valkyrie. Okay. Why are Dwarven Valkyries easy? Well, I'll go through that as we get to the certain points where it becomes relevant, but basically they're super tough and they can take a lot of punishment. Um... So, and also, um, they're lawful. Lawful tends to be a little easier to deal with as an alignment. There's lawful, there's neutral, and then there's chaotic. Um, lawful tends to be a little bit easier to follow. Um, especially if you don't feel like being too much of a dick. Because, again, if you're an asshole to this game, it will be an asshole back tenfold. Like, they are just... Ugh. It's, it's very crazy. Alright, so yes, this is what we want. Alright, here we go. It is written in the Book of Tyr. After the creation, the cruel god Moloch rebelled against the authority of Marduk the Creator. Moloch stole from Marduk the most powerful of all the artifacts of the gods, the Amulet of Yendor, and he hid it in the dark cavities of Gehenna, the underworld, where he now lurks and bides his time. Your god Tyr seeks to possess the amulet, and with it to gain the deserved ascendance over the other gods. You, a newly trained stripling, have been heralded from birth as the instrument of Tyr. You are destined to recover the amulet for your deity, or die in the attempt. Your hour of destiny has come. For the sake of us all, go bravely with Tyr. Alright, so there's the wonderful so-so uh, story. Bye, Cookie! We're also streaming at 7 p.m. tonight, don't forget. Okay, so let's take a look at our starting screen. Um, right now I am in a room. I'll explain what everything is um, as far as the actual gameplay uh, screen is concerned. But let's take a look at the bottom first. So there's my name, Aradil the Stripling. Then I have my stats, strength, dexterity, uh, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Okay. Um, my, uh, there's my alignment, which is lawful. There's D level is dungeon level. I have zero dollars. I have 18 out of 18 HP. I have one out of one power, which is basically like mana. Um, I have one experience. T, this is T1 there at the end. That's the turn counter. Turns are extremely important in this game. Every time you move, it takes up a turn. And most of the duration of stuff lasts on turns. You don't want to spend turns if you can help it. Every single turn that you can save counts. You'll see me moving diagonally a lot. Because if you can move diagonally through like a hallway, it saves you an extra step. And it is so important to save as many turns as possible. Because again, this game will try to screw with you as much as it possibly can. So you need to be prepared. Um... The other issue here is um, this uh, area here that says AC. I don't know if you guys can see my pointer, actually. I'm not sure if you can. But um, I'll highlight it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it highlighted. But AC. AC stands for armor class. Uh, if you've ever played Dungeons & Dragons... Uh, oh, hey, Eulalia! What's up? Mwah! So happy that you're here. Um, if you ever played Dungeons & Dragons... Um, okay, it doesn't look like you can see my pointer, but you can see me highlighting it. Alright. Um, if you've ever played D&D, uh, second edition, and I think at first edition, works off of something called THACO. T-H-A-C-O, which stands to, which stands for to hit AC zero. Which basically means you need to hit this certain amount to hit my AC as zero so that you can start doing damage to me. So what's weird about Thacko is that negative numbers are better. Basically, this is the penalty that people have to hit. Natural AC for all characters is 10. Mine is 6 because of the armor that I have equipped to me. We'll look at our inventory in a second. 
but the goal is to get our AC into the negatives. The higher the number it is, the easier it is for people to hit because they basically have a plus six to hit me. So normally you would want, you know, your number of armor to be higher, but with Thacko, you want it to be lower. It's very weird. I don't like Thacko. It's just the way the game works. We will deal with it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hit lowercase i. Lowercase and uppercase letters are totally different uh, commands. And here is our inventory. Every Dwarven Valkyrie starts with a plus one longsword and a plus zero dagger. Sometimes they are blessed, sometimes they're not. Neither of them are blessed. We're very unhealthy in that way. Also, every Dwarven Valkyrie starts with a plus three small shield. Sometimes it's blessed, sometimes it's not. It's not. Unfortunately, we were also unlucky in that way. Uh, as for our comestibles, comestibles are basically um, usable items, usually food. Um, food is a big thing in this game. Again, another thing with turns. You, food will only keep you satiated for so many turns before you start to starve. And when you start to starve, you can start passing out. And if you pass out, then enemies get free swings at you and then you die very quickly. Um, what's wrong, Freggy? Anyway, um, so the Dwarven Valkyrie can start with either, with any combination of one food ration or two food rations, or they could also start with a lantern, which is good for lighting up dark areas. I got the shit end of the deal, which is just a single food ration. <laughs> This is bad. This is basically the worst setup that you can have as a Dwarven Valkyrie, of course. So let's look at the play screen here. I'm in a room. Uh, those dots represent spaces in the room. Those uh, yellow plus signs are doors. This F next to me that is highlighted is my pet. Every character pretty much gets a pet. Um, I can change the name of the pet. This the F stands for feline. This is a cat. You can also start with a puppy, which will be a lowercase d for dog. Um, I could type in the name command and um, name my my cat. Um, I'll show you. Name a monster. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight the monster. What do you want to call the kitten? We will call the kitten Fitter Kitty because we all love kits and we haven't seen her in a long time. Okay. There we go. So now we can also do look. Oh, um. Oh, God. How do I do it? I forget how I do the look command. No, I don't want to loot. All right. Forget about it. Okay. So you're going to see as we move. Uh, as you move, as you see, there is that bracket. Um, the less. I think it's. Less than green. I don't know. Anyway, this is indicative of um, a staircase that goes upward. If we try to take it, it'll exit the game and we automatically lose. We don't want to do that. Um, you also see, okay, see, Fitter Kitty picked up a scroll. The question marks are scrolls. I left the cat along for too long, so I went to pick up a scroll. Um, naturally, your pets will want to pick up items to try and gain your favor in the hopes that you will give them food because they are fat asses and like to eat everything in fucking sight, including your own fucking food rations and shit, which is very <laughs> frustrating. However, you can use um, treats to train pets. Like if I had um, like a tripe ration on me, which is what you normally feed pets, and the cat dropped the item in front of me and I gave it the treat. It would then know that it's going to get rewarded if it brings me items. And it'll start scouring the area for items and bringing them to me. Uh, right now I just want to move around to get it to drop it. Thank you. Okay. You see here a scroll named Elam Ebao. Every s item in this game pretty much... Um, comes with these random names. You don't know what they are until you either use them or find some other way to identify them. The names are randomly generated every game. So whatever Elam Ebao is in this game, it's not going to be the same scroll in the next game, which makes it very frustrating. So I picked up the scroll, and it is now labeled E. Now I can read it 
that would be a terrible idea because there are a lot of th bad scrolls like scrolls of punishment or scrolls of fire that will light everything in my inventory on fire. We don't want to read those. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try and open this door. And you're going to see, we're going to start seeing these hashtags. These are the hallways. And as I move, whatever I can see, it's going to start generating. So we're going to start moving here. I'm going to search. Okay, I find a hidden door. The door opens. All right, here's this room. There's nothing in this room. All right, this door is locked. There are a couple of ways that we can pick locked doors. I don't have any now, so we're just going to go the old-fashioned way and kick the shit out of the door. It crashes open. <laughs> if you have the choice to pick a lock rather than kick down a door you want to because you never know when you might want to hide behind a door. Here's a boulder. Hopefully we won't get caught behind it. We probably will. Okay. I can squeeze through this corner here because I'm not holding much. If my inventory is too much, then I'm gonna, it, it would, I wouldn't be able to move past there. Our cat's just going to do whatever the hell it feels like because it's being a pain in the ass. Don't mind me as I'm trying to... Here we go. I knew there had to be a door here. Okay. Two cream pies. Cream pies are interesting. You could eat them or if somebody is chasing you, you could throw it in their face and it'll blind them. So, kind of cute. All right. I don't need anything over here. You'll also notice, see, how some of the dots are white and some of them are gray? That's showing my field of vision. So I can see, like, what I can see and what enemies can see me. Very useful. All right, here we go. Here's some money. Ten gold pieces. Beautiful. There are lots of shops we'll run into that we can use gold pieces for. Um, there are also some really powerful demons down in the lower levels that we can actually bribe to not fight us if we have enough gold. I don't like giving gold to those bastards. They're greedy and mean, and I would rather kill them. But, you know, it happens. Sometimes it's for the best. Okay, this door is locked. I'm going to kick it down. Okay, here's our first enemy. This R is some kind of rat. R's are usually rats or rodents or something of that nature. It's a sewer rat. Okay, I killed the sewer rat. Excellent. Um, I didn't get any experience for it. Why didn't I get experience for it? That's not good. I don't know. I shouldn't have. I should have gotten experience. All right. Here's a jackal. Jackals are good because they're low-level enemies and their corpses are safe to eat. Most enemies' corpses are safe to eat. That's how we're mostly going to be eating is by eating corpses. We don't want to waste our food rations unless we need them. Here's a magenta potion. Again, don't know what it is. Here's some more money. I hope y'all are doing wonderful this afternoon. I'm sorry if I'm blabbing too much. Alright, here's some items. A trident. Trident is a weapon. I'm not interested in it. This is a fountain. Fountains have a lot of really interesting properties. Um, things that fountains can do for everyone. Um, you can... Um, drink from the fountain. Sometimes nothing will happen. Sometimes the fountain will disappear. Sometimes you'll get a wish um, where you can literally w type anything into it. It'll give you a, a word parser and you can type in what you want. Um, sometimes a water demon will come out and completely wreck your shit. Not smart to be drinking fountains earlier in the game. We can also use fountains to um, blank scrolls and dilute potions um, because we can mix together our own potions and write our own scrolls. So if you want to write a scroll or mix a potion and you have a potion you don't really need you or a scroll you don't really need, you can wipe it inside a fountain and then you can do whatever you want with it. Right now what I'm looking for is the way down to the next level, which we already found is down here. This is the here way down to the next level. I'm doing right now is a fast traveling. It's asking where do I want to travel to? I'm trying to travel there. All right, here we go. Okay, you hear the footsteps of a guard on patrol. That means that there is a vault on this level. Randomly, there's a certain amount of there's a certain chance on each level you visit that there will be a vault. Basically, it's a 4 by 4 square somewhere in the area where there's massive amounts of gold. You need something to be able to dig through the walls to find it. It's not going to be in a regular room. It's going to be somewhere in these blank spaces in between these hallways. Um, if you get there, get the 
money and exit out quick, you're fine. If you stick around too long, the guards come and then bad things happen. <laughs> okay, so this is a grid bug. Very easy enemy. I killed it. Excellent. We also want I also want to try to let my pet kill some enemies because the pet gains um a uh, a level each time it kills an enemy or it gains experience each time like one experience each time it gains an enemy. Uh, it kills an enemy that is and it can become bigger and stronger But the cat does not seem to want to play with us. So I might just leave it behind Usually you always want your pet with you for dwarven valkyries eh, We're pretty strong. All right, we descend the stairs. Here's level two. We we have two jackals in this room beautiful Okay, so you see the highlight here. That means there's more than one item a Jackal corpse a bag. All right first thing I'm gonna do is eat the jackal corpse the jackal corpse tastes terrible. It's all right. It didn't make us sick. It just didn't taste nice. Daslin, what is up? Welcome to the stream. All right. So, bags. <laughs> bags are kind of a weird thing in this game. There are regular plain old bags. There are bags of holding that um, reduce the weight of whatever is inside, which lets us hold more. Which is awesome. Bags of holdings are awesome. And there's also bags of tricks that will try to eat us if we pick it up. <laughs> so there's a very simple way to start testing for this. And that's to loot the bag. There's a bag here. Loot it. Yes, you carefully open the bag. Alright. So we can open the bag, which means it is not a bag of tricks. It's not going to bite us. Look inside the bag. The bag is empty. Okay. I'm going to take the bag. I doubt that it's a bag of holding. They rarely spawn by themselves. However, if I get into a situation where I run into an enemy that can blank my scrolls or break my potions, or if I fall into water, um, anything in my bag should be protected uh, to a certain extent. So bags are usually good to have in general for protecting items that you don't want enemies getting their hands on. So I'm going to take the bag anyway. So you, bags are very useful to have. Okay, here's our very first shop. All of these items here on the floor are regular items. Welcome to Wana Tobo's General Store. All right, general stores sell a mixture of pretty much everything. Um, now, how can we fuck with the stores? There's plenty of ways we could fuck with the stores. Our pet can grab stuff out of the stores and walk out, of, walk out with it, and the store owner doesn't really give a shit. So we could use our pets to steal shit. However, my cat was being super uncooperative and I didn't feel like dealing with her so I left her behind and uh, so that's not going to help us um, if we try to steal from the store from the general from the store master here's what happens if I walk into the store and I pick up an item the store master is immediately going to go to the square in front of the door and he will not move until we pay he's not going to let us walk out with an item until we pay for it if we try to do some shenanigans like turn invisible or dig through the walls of his store, he's going to start wrecking our shit. Uh, store clerks are extremely powerful and are usually equipped with some kind of nasty wand that is going to kill you. So TLDR, don't fuck with store owners. Um, okay. Oh, there's a lichen. Where's the lichen? Oh. It's the F right there. I'm an idiot. Uh, this at symbol uh, uh, that is diagonally uh, is, uh, the lower right from me, that's the store owner. At symbols are indicative of humanoid creatures. So that's the store owner. Now, I killed this lichen corpse. This, this, this screen here, right in front of the door, is not considered part of the store, oddly enough. So what you usually do with your pets is you usually usher pet into the store, stand at the door, wait for the pet to step, put something into this space here, and then go and pick it up, and the, the store clerk doesn't care. I, the game is kind of weird like that. Okay, so an iron ring. All right. This is where shit gets crazy. I have to look this up. So there is something called price identification that we can use. Because, again, this game cheats, so we cheat back. Because, screw it. <laughs> um, basically, the price for items is based on whether they are uh, uncursed 
uh, cursed or blessed, and your charisma. Uh, the higher your charisma, the less they will sell items to you for. The the uh, I'm sorry, the less your charisma, the more expensive things will be. The higher your charisma, the more of a discount they'll give you. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, so they also changed the price identification, but uh, the wiki now has price identification for this version, so praise the Lord, hallelujah. Alright, so this is a ring. Let's go to the ring section here. Basically, it's a bunch of tables. Okay, here we go, rings. So the, it's 133 Zork mids. So what I want to do is I want to look where my charisma is. My charisma is 8. So under the charisma 8 to 10, 133 Zork mids is the lowest base. That could be uh, several things. Some of them I don't want to have be cursed. A lot of the times items that will fuck you over will have a very high chance of naturally showing up cursed. If an item is cursed, once you put it on, you can't take it off without uncursing it first. Curses are bad. For instance, um, there is a ring of hunger, okay, that could that is in this price range. Rings of hunger are generated cursed 90% of the time. Chances are, if I pick up this ring, buy it, and put it on, it's probably going to be a ring of hunger, which is going to make my hunger plummet, and I'm going to die very quickly of starvation. Uh, there's nothing in this uh, this price range that really interests me, so I don't really care about this item. We also only have $97, so we can't even afford it as it is. What I'm looking for more here is a cheap scroll. Like a super cheap scroll. 533. 107 is kind of cheap. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And I'll tell you why I'm looking for this. Where's the scrolls? Where are all my scrolls? Okay, here we go. Okay, so my charisma is 8, and it's 27. Perfect. Alright, so I could tell via price identification that this is a scroll of identify. What up, Shelties? What up, girl? Uh, this is NetHack. I didn't know what else to do. If you guys are not interested in this, I will switch to another game. This is kind of more of an experimental thing. I'm kind of just going through how the game works. But um, this is a scroll of identification. Um, if we read the scroll, it will, rent, it will uh, identify an item in our inventory of our choice. Uh, if it's cursed, it'll only identify one item. If the if the scroll is uncursed, it can identify one, two, or three items. If it's blessed, it can identify one, two, three items, or it has a chance of identifying every single item in your inventory, which is pretty fucking sweet. Unless I really am in a situation where I really need to know where something is, I like to wait until I have the ability to bless scrolls of identify before using them, because if I can get my whole inventory identified in one shot, it is super useful. So I'm going to pick this up. For you, esteemed lady, only 27 Zork mids for this scroll labeled Kobate. Alright, so I'm going to pay for it. And then what I'm going to do, because I know through price identification that this is a scroll of identify... I'm going to name um, the type of an object in inventory. Uh, Kobate. Call a scroll labeled Kobate Identify. And now if we go into our item, uh, our item list, it's going to say a scroll called Identify. Anytime we run into another scroll that's called Kobate, it's going to automatically tell us it's Identify because I told it to identify all items of this type by this name. It is kind of like D&D. Um, I was explaining our AC here uh, works like Thacko does in 1st and 2nd edition D&D. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the plus 3 small shield. Oh yeah, by the way, interesting thing. Reason why plus, th I said that our base AC is 10. Reason why I have 4 less AC. The small shield naturally has 1 AC of uh, one AC point. The plus three gives it three extra. So plus three doesn't mean that it has three protection. It means it has three extra protections. That's where the four comes from. Um, 
But yeah, so far we've got a scroll of identify, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know what the rest of the stuff is. I mean, there's so many things. A carrot, an egg. Uh, this is where the game gets kind of cheeky. Carrots not only work as food, but if you're blind, eating a carrot will cure you. Because, you know, carrots are good for your eyesight. Yeah, this game gets kind of cheeky like that. Too. Oh, if I had the money for the food rations, I'd pick them up. Funny thing about food rations, the hungrier you are, the more the, they will cost when you walk into a shop. Because the shop... Oh! Okay. Okay. So, Hawaiian shirts. Hawaiian shirts and t-shirts are super, super important. Uh, they could be worn underneath all your armor, so they're an extra piece of clothing that you can wear. Because normally the only thing you'd really be able to wear on your body is... Um, an armor and a cloak, but you can wear a shirt under your armor and cloak. It's another piece of uh, clothing that you can put extra AC on to give you more protection. So we are going to pick up this shirt. Uh, let's pay. Um, likely it's probably going to be cursed if it was only four Zorkmans. It's definitely not blessed, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Cram rations um, don't fulfill quite as much hunger as uh, a regular food ration does, but it takes up a lot less weight in your inventory because um, these little food ration suckers, these things are surprisingly heavy and they get really annoying. Lembus wafers! If you guys know Lord of the Rings, you know what a Lembus wafer is. They're very expensive because... You eat them and they keep you full for an extremely long time. Lembus wafers are pretty sweet. Uh, but I don't really want to spend all the rest of my money left on a Lembus wafer. They're not too difficult to find out in the wild. Alright. So there's no other door, which means it's hidden. So I'm going to search. Alright. There we go. Uh, it's locked. We're going to kick that shit down. Yeah, there's a lot of references to a lot of old school um, fantasy stuff, especially Lord of the Rings. There's a lot of Lord of the Rings references in this game. Alright, there's nothing. Oh. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's a falling rock trap. So I was dumb and went over it again like, hey, what is this? You hear the chime of a cash register. That means that there is a shop somewhere in the level. We found the shop, so I'm not really concerned about that. But uh, you hear some cursing shop updates. That's another indication that there's a there's a uh, shop. To my side, my noble I'm Harryar. Piz Sims, thank you so much for the follow, my friend, and welcome to the Choo Choo Club, everybody. Give Piz Sims a super warm welcome. Okay, here's um some more jackals. Ooh, 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 it dropped a ring. An agate ring. Now, I could go back into the store if I really wanted to, drop the ring, see how much it wants me it w it wants to buy it from me for and also price identify it that way. Uh I, I, in fact, I think it might be worth it to do that actually. A, a golden potion. This is a yellow spell book. I don't like carrying spell books. They're very heavy. I'm not a magic user class. I wear heavy armor. Metal armor really brings down your chance to successfully cast spells. <laughs> uh, and if you're at a really low spell casting level and you try to read a book, it can do really terrible things to you. Like make all your gold disappear or teleport you to a really deep level of the dungeon that you can't get out of. Fun stuff like that, you know? So basically, when I'm looking to get as much... Um, stuff as I can for my journey while also looking for uh, the next part of this dungeon. Oh! Hello, Aradel. I have some mail for you. That means somebody sent me a message. It's probably either my brother or my friend Chris. Um, what do you want to read? I want to make sure I don't read one of my scrolls. A stamped scroll. Okay. So here we go. Reading mail will violate illiterate conduct. Read anyway. There is something that people like to do in this game called conduct. Um, 
Basically, conducts are different things. Like, illiterate conduct means you don't read anything throughout the entire game. There's pacifist, which is where you don't kill anything. And they're basically little challenges that people make for themselves. I haven't beaten this game once because I'm a terrible person. So I don't care about any conduct, so I don't care. I'm going to read it. What the f- Where did it go? I didn't see anything. As you read the scroll, it disappears. Okay. Thanks? I don't know what happened there. Oh, there's a rat. I don't feel like dealing with it. Oh. Ooh, slime molds are super yummy. So I'm going to take that with me. Um, you know what? I'm not going to worry about the ring right now. Another jackal. I am going to eat the jackal corpse because I'm probably going to start getting hungry soon. Alrighty. We descend the stairs. Alright, here we go. 26 gold pieces and a sc another scroll. I don't know what that scroll is. Black gem. Alright. Most gems are worthless glass. Some of them are very expensive. You need to find a way to identify them. If they are unidentified, if you sell it to a store, it will give you money like it's a worthless piece of glass. And if you try to buy it from a store, it will sell it to you like it's an extremely expensive gem. Again, game likes to screw you over at every opportunity. Alright, here's a dog. Oh, it's a statue. I'm sorry. It's a statue of a fox, which is also... Oh! Here's more mail. Alright. I don't know why I'm not getting any mail. That's very weird. Alright, I'm at level 2. There's another fountain. Again, we don't want to mess with them yet. There's something very cool that we can do um, as a lawful person. A mace. Maces, I don't need them. I'm sticking with my sword. Because there's a very special sword that I can get once I get to level 5. I don't really care about the newt. Oh, is that you, Anthony, trying to send me stuff? Yeah, this is the new version of NetHack. I don't know, maybe the mailing is bugged or... I don't know. Here's a kobold. Kobold's dead. Sixty-one gold pieces. All right. So you can see I have three doors now. This is what I was looking for. We have two down ones. One in that room in the upper left, and one in the room I'm in now. One of them leads down towards the, more of the Dungeons of Doom. The other one leads into a place called the Gnomish Mines. Here's one of the reasons why I chose Dwarven Valkyrie. Because I am a dwarf, the gnomes and dwarves in the Gnomish Mines will not be aggressive towards me. Unless I go after them. So most of the bad guys in there are not going to be trying to kill me. <laughs> Which is fantastic and makes going through them much easier. Uh, we'll likely die a horrible death. At the bottom of the Gnomish Mines is something called a Lux Stone. Which is very, very nice to have. Uh, but it is also a very deadly place. Uh, whether you can go there now or come back is kind of up to you. Um, there's another place that we're going to be heading towards soon called Sokoban. Some people like to go to Sokoban first and then go back down towards the Gnomish Mines. The bad downside to that is that the higher level you are, some nasty shit shows up in the Gnomish Mines. So, I'm just going to go down now. Okay, this is the Gnomish Mines. Uh, it is, of course, a dark level of it, which means I can't see shit, because, of course, why would I be able to see shit? Thank you, NetHack, for that. Like I said, game fucks you, etc. Alright, whistle. Strange whistling sound. Beautiful. We have to produce a strange whistling sound, which means that this whistle is a magic whistle. The way magic whistles work, um... Any pets that you have on the level, if you blow the magic whistle, will automatically be teleported to your location. Could have used that on level one when our fucking cat decided it wanted to go flip a shit. But, 
that's neither here nor there. We'll hang on to it in case we can... Alright. <sighs> Here's where some of the sadness comes in. This H is another dwarf like us. Um... Normally, I wouldn't want to attack it. It's peaceful. I'm going to piss off my god a little bit if I do. However, they have some super awesome items on us that I would love to have. So basically, the answer to this conundrum is slaughter all my brethren. Really attack the dwarf? Yes. Beautiful. All right. I want this dagger. I want this cloak. I want these shoes. If I am not going to eat the dwarf corpse. If you, eat, if you are lawful and you eat a corpse of your own race that is considered cannibalism and your god will be extremely pissed off yeah not a good thing to do don't ever eat corpses of your own people it's not a good idea banded mail all right i'm gonna pick up the banded mail uh because i need some kind of armor oh a lamp hallelujah it might be a magic lamp that we could rub for a wish but i'm not worried about that right now Right now, I just want light. You can see now with the lamp, I can s expose more of the area at one time. It's going to make exploring much easier. <laughs> Beautiful. You can take the corpse with you, but it's going to decay after a while, and they're extremely heavy. There's no reason for us to, uh, to take them with us. Pair of leather gloves. Leather gloves can be very good or very bad, depending on what they're identified as. If they are gloves, uh, if they're gloves of fumbling, we're going to start dropping things at randomly. And of course, gloves of fumbling always generate cursed because my life. So we are not going to put those on until we can identify them. And I'll show you how we can identify uh, what's called. It's what's called BUC identification, which means BUC standing for blessed, uncursed, cursed. It basically will tell you if it's blessed, uncursed or cursed and if it's safe to try on. Uh, you need to die because I want what's on you. Oh, actually, you know what? The pancake would be pretty sweet, too. I'm taking multiple of these items in case uh, one of them is cursed. Because I'm not going to wear those, obviously. We're getting to a point where I will be able to identify things. No, I don't want to attack the gnome. Oh, here's a giant bat. Bat's dead. Screw you, bat. You want me to eat the pan- I don't need to eat the pancake right now. I'll eat it when I get hungry. All right, here we go. Next level. All right. This level is light, so the first thing I'm going to do is turn off my lamp because lamps have a certain amount of time in them, and I don't want to waste my lamp. I don't need crossbow bolts. It's a bugbear. If you are a D&D &D person, you know what a bugbear is. They're not fun. They can grab you in this game. It makes you want to cry. Oh, God. This is a level teleport trap. It's going to bring us to a random level, probably somewhere I don't want to be. You're momentarily blinded by a flash of light. Oh, you shudder for a moment. That means that we happen to resist the trap. Thank God. Blindfold. I'm going to take the blindfold. There are a couple of reasons why we might want to intentionally blind ourselves. And um, I'm going to take it. Clear potions. Clear potions are always water. They're the one potion that's the same thing in every playthrough. They are always water. Uh, you can bless them to make holy water. And then dip things in them to bless them. Oh, hold on. It's the server's lagging. There we go. Um... You can also um, dip them in unholy water to curse them. I don't know why you'd really want to do that, but maybe. Uh, take this orcish helm. Yeah, here's this. Orcs come in big packs like this, so they're going to start screwing with us. I want gold. Thank you. No, I don't want to hit you. I don't care about you. Here's the exit. This bat just like... Uh-oh! Okay, so... One of the rats that I fought was a were-rat, and it bit me, which gives us a chance to turn into a were-rat. Watch this, guys. You turn into a were-rat. You can no longer hold your shield. You find you must drop your sword. Use the monster command to summon help. All right. You can't even move a hand span with this load. Okay, so. When you turn into a rat, you drop your weapon, anything in your hands, you drop out of your armor, obviously. 
as a rat, I can type the monster command to summon more rats to help me. Over here in the lower right, you'll see it says overloaded. Also, I'm hungry, which is something else I have to deal with, but it says I'm overloaded. I can't move when I'm overloaded, because all the rest of my items are still in my body, and rats can't hold a lot, they're tiny. Luckily, I, there is a way for me to get out of this, and that is the pray command. If you are on good terms with your god, you can pray for assistance. <laughs> there is a list of potential issues that you currently have that rank in importance, and it will take the most dire one on the list, if you're in good standing with your god, and, and cure that issue. Um, being transformed into a rat very high up on that, oh my god, I'm fucked, please help me list. If you are on bad terms with your god, the god will either ignore you or do things to hurt you or, in really extreme cases in some of the other versions of NetHack, send demons down to you to try and kill you. Or angels, if, they're, if, if, you know, if it's a lawful god you're praying to. Um, you can also only pray so often, usually anywhere from 800 to 1,000 turns every 800 to 1,000 turns or so. At least that's the way it was in 3.4.3. Um, um, I have yet to, ch to pray to my God at all, so we should be good to pray. Are you sure you want to pray? Yes. You, are, you begin praying to Tear. You are surrounded by a shimmering light. You finish your prayer. You feel that Tear is well pleased. You feel purified. You return to Dwarven form. Yay! Our God doesn't hate us and he helped us. Beautiful. Your movements are now unencumbered. All right, so now all my shit's on the floor. Picking up my shit. The next thing we need to do is put our shit back on. I want to wear my small shield, and I want to... Um, I'm sorry, I want to wield my long sword. There we go. Now we're back on track. That sucked. Okay, you see this random hashtag up there? That says to me that somebody on this level is digging through the wall. Either there's a monster that can dig or somebody has a pickaxe. If somebody has a pickaxe, that bitch gonna die because I need a pickaxe. Oh, the cobalt shaman zaps a spiked wand. The bolt of cold hits you. You don't feel cold. The bolt of cold bounces. That was lucky. I need to... Oh, shit. Okay, so you can see, um, wand zaps will bounce back to you. So I got hit twice there. It hurt my HP. Uh, however, what I'm more worried about is it breaking my shit. There we go. And now this wand of cold is ours. Screw you! Uh, wands have a certain amount of charges. You can recharge them once. Um, I don't know how many charges that thing has left in it. Don't really care. Copper ring, food ration. Yes, please, and thank you. All right. So, see that dwarf? That dwarf has a pickaxe. But, of course, I stepped onto a level teleport trap first before I could get to him. hack. Where are you taking me? We're on dungeon level two. Wow. Fucking wow. All right. Oh, why am I... Oh, okay, I'm burdened now because I'm weak. Um, so let me eat that pancake. Oh, it was rotten. You dreamed that you heard water falling on coins. That means there's a, there's a fountain in this level, but we already obviously know that. Okay, um... Partially eaten pancake. Let's eat the rest of that pancake. Now that we're no longer weak, uh, we can carry our shit again. Let's eat that slime mold. Alright, we're good. Um... This was the entrance into, uh... Yeah, there we go. This is super annoying. I want to go get that thing again. I want it. I want it and I'm gonna have it. I want that pickaxe. It's either a pickaxe or a mattock. And I don't really care which. Well, I would like it to be a pickaxe. Maddocks are much heavier. Alright. Where are you, you little bastard? Here you are. Give me your shit. Pickaxe! Thank you very much! Ooh, and a bubbly potion. Okay, now it's gonna warn us that we're... Alright. Uh, yes. 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 Alright. 
So here's something interesting we can try and do. We can try and test to see if this bag is a bag of holding or not. If I put all my shit into the bag of holding, uh, we should become unburdened. So I want to apply the bag and put in, uh, let's see, uh, probably these shoes, these cloaks, this helm, this mail. That should be enough. Oh, look at that, guys. Look at that. Did you see that? My movements are unencumbered. We happened upon a bag of holding. Holy shit, guys. It is so rare to find a bag of holding in this game. That is fucking unreal, and I am pleased as punch. That is pretty incredible. All right. Um... The, also, the other thing that's kind of sad that this means is Sokoban has two versions of itself, which is the area that we're heading to next. And one of the prizes is a bag of holding. <laughs> uh, obviously, we're not going to need that. So now we have a 50% chance that Sokoban's going to be a waste of our time. Um, we're still going to try it, though. Uh, I want to name a particular object in my inventory. I want to name this bag... bag of holding. And I always put a smiley face on my bag of holding. Because it makes me happy. Oh, um... Oh, gosh, if I had the ability... If... Oh, okay. <clears throat> Here's another thing. Raven Zero's Ghost. This level is what is called a Bones File. Basically, when you play on the NetHack servers, there's a random chance that you might wander on the exact level that somebody died on, in which case you get to run into and fight their ghost. You'll also find the pile of the belongings that they had when they died, which is cool, except that the majority of those items are going to be cursed. <laughs> but, um, where's the ghost? Okay, the ghost is in this blank space here to the lower left of me. I gotta watch my HP and be careful. I'm missing like crazy. I'm missing like fucking crazy. Oh, here's a fucking... Alright, there we go. I destroyed the ghost. Okay, something is engraved on the headstone. Raven Zero killed by a bolt of cold. Probably that cobalt that we took out that we stole the, the wand from. That's probably what killed her. There are many objects here. So here's her entire territory. All right. Tattered capes are magical capes. I'm going to take it on the off chance that it might not be cursed. <laughs> the money can't be cursed. But money doesn't have a BUC I, uh, thing. So I'm just taking your money. Fuck you. Um, clear potion. Eh. Eh. Rings. Eh. Oh, a magic marker. Oh. Thank you. Uh, if that magic marker is not cursed, that will be huge. We use magic markers to write our own scrolls. Get it? It's it, get it. Magic marker, quote unquote magic. You write magical scrolls with it. Magic mark. Get it? It's funny. All right. Um. Uh, these these rings might be good too. All right. I took some of those things because I don't care. No, I don't want to fight you. Out of my way. I have things to do. I'm a very important person. Yeah, I don't care. Rocks fall, everyone dies, etc., etc. Okay. Ooh. You feel more confident in your weapon skills. Okay. Now we're going to go to the enhanced screen. When you use certain things, you have the ability to become more skilled in them. Uh, longsword and dagger are my natural things. Everything else that's unskilled takes a shit ton of time to work up. Uh, but I'm going to put this in longsword. You are now more skilled in the longsword. That's going to be our main weapon is going to be longswords. Forked wand. Fork you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, I know what this is. This is a very specific level of uh, mine town. Mine Town is the next place where I was looking to go. So let me apply my lamp. Um, I, I can tell because I know the layouts by heart. It's kind of disgusting. Wait a minute. 
Yes, no, yes, is this mine town? Yes, this is. Uh, basically, this is a town, uh, and this is where we're going to start identifying stuff. There's a, there, all right, this is a, uh, a town guard. Don't fuck with the town guards. For the love of God, don't fuck with the town guards. If you start shit with other people, they don't care, but don't fuck with the town guards. Especially this dude. This is the guard captain. The guard captain has an item on him called the Silver Saber. He will wreck your shit. Alright, up here, this is where we're going to identify stuff. The Priestess of Loki intones, Pilgrim, you enter a sacred place. You have a forbidding feeling. Alright. This is a temple. The temple is randomly aligned. It's not our alignment. That sucks because we can do a lot of fun things with temples that are our alignment. So this is an altar. This is a, obviously a chaotic altar because this is a chaotic temple. Dropping items on an altar will BUC identify them. So we're going to just drop all of our shit right here. Like a bunch of crazy people. Um, apply our bag. Uh, take out everything. Wait, ah. There we go. Yes. It's going to say we can't move. I don't care because I'm just going to shove it all back anyway. All right. Drop all items of unknown BCU status. Oh, no, 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 no. Drop. Just that. All right. Let's go past these. I don't care because I'm going to see when I pick it up. All right. Anything in red is... <laughs> Look at this. What did I tell you? Two of the three Dwarvish cloaks are cursed. The Hawaiian shirt is cursed. I knew that was going to happen. Tattered cape is cursed, of course. The gloves are cursed. I called that, too. Um, the scroll of identify is cursed, of course, because fuck my life, but that's all right. Um, that scroll is blessed. Oh, we got, a, we got holy water. That's good. Uh, two of those rings are cursed. The wand of cold is cursed. Um... Everything else is uncursed. That magic marker is uncursed. That is so lucky. Oh my god. We are so lucky that that was uncursed. Alright. So first we're weak. So the first thing I'm going to take... Uh, oh, uh, yes. Eat the... Alright. I'm going to pick everything up. It's going to yell at me. Yes. Alright, I'm going to apply my bag, and I'm going to put everything in the bag that I want to sell, and then I'm going to go to the general store here in Mine Town, and I'm going to sell it for that sweet, sweet cash. Um, let's put in... I don't want any of this shit, because fuck that. I'm tempted to hold on to the tattered cape in the hopes that I find a way to uncurse something. Um... But it's probably not worth my time. Um, we don't have any other helms, so we'll keep that. Um, I'll sell two of the pairs of iron shoes. Technically, I should wear all of them to see if one of them is a plus one rather than a plus zero, but I don't feel like dealing. Uh, the identify will keep because that's still going to work. Um... In fact, reading that to identify that that cape might not be a bad idea. You know what? Let's do that. Let's read the scroll of identify. This is identify scroll. What would you like to identify? What is this tattered cape? It's magic resistance. Oh, God. That is the best cloak in the game. That is what we want. It is cursed. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Alright, I'm gonna hold on to that. That is worth holding on to. That is worth holding on to. Alright. In the bag, we are putting what we are selling. We are selling these these. This. You're selling this magenta potion. Don't feel like dealing with it. Don't feel like dealing with these rings. Uh, the Wand of Cold will keep because even though it's cursed, it's still useful. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm still burdened? Really? Oh, you know why? Alright, let's put on some stuff, too. Um, let's put on this banded mail. Uh, let's put on this cloak. Let's put on the helm. Let's put on the shoes. Now our AC is negative three, guys. This is what I want to see at this point. Oh, shit! Shelties, you're right! I can dip it in the holy water I have! Shelties, good looking out. You are 110% right. I have holy water there. My blessed clear potion. You're, we're going to do that immediately. Thank you. Good looking out. Good looking out. Uh, Alright. We wa want to remove the dwarvish cloak. Okay. Uh, no. No. Um, I forget what the short key is for this, so here we go. Clear potion. No. Why won't you let me just choose the item? <laughs> Hold on. Dip. That's what I want. What do you want to dip? I want to dip the cloak. What do you want to dip the cloak of magic resistance into? The clear potion. Your cloak of magic resistance glows amber. Call a clear potion water. And now the magic resistance is uncursed. You are unbelievable, Shelties. That is how long it's been that I've played this game that I was too stupid to even realize. All right. Magic resistance cloaks are usually found pretty late game, so I am very happy to have one right now. This is going to save our ass. Shelties, you are amazing. You are amazing. Alright. I want to apply the bag. I need to put more stuff in the bag so I can move without being burdened. When you're burdened and you move, you take up extra... <laughs> Uh, turns, and I don't want that. Alright, I'm gonna put in the cloak. I have to eat the rest of that food ration. I'm gonna put in these scrolls. I'm gonna put in these potions. These rings. Um... Oh, the, yeah, the, I need the lamp. Um, definitely putting the magic marker in there. Have to put the pickaxe in there. If we try to walk into a store with a pickaxe, it, they will tell us to please put our pickaxe away. Uh, to le I'm sorry, to put it, leave it outside of the store because they don't want you mining through the wall of the store to escape. Okay? All you really have to do is keep it in your bag. If you keep it in your bag, the, door, the, the shopkeeper's an idiot and he'll let you in anyway. If you take out your pickaxe while you're in the store, you will get yelled at by the shopkeeper. Again, you don't want to piss off shopkeepers, as a general rule. Alright, we're not burdened anymore. Excellent. Beautiful. Be Ooh, and we got a silver wand. Let me show you how to test a wand. This should be interesting. So what you do is you go into a remote corner somewhere. And we're going to use the engrave ability. We're going to engrave with our fingers. We're going to write Elbereth. <laughs> Um, Elbereth, I don't know if it works in this version of the game, but, um, in the original game, basically, Elbereth is the name of a very powerful being that scares monsters. If you write Elbereth into a square and stand on it, monsters that are attacking you will flee. Um, for every turn that you stand on it, the word will start to degrade, unless you use, like, a wand of fire or a wand of lightning, which permanently engraves the word on the floor. So I make it a habit for myself to just always engrave Elbereth so I get used to engraving Elbereth because it's a useful thing to engrave. You know, it, we, could, we could really write whatever, but we might as well keep good practices while we can. So now I'm going to engrave over it with the silver wand. The silver wand is a wand of digging! Thank you very much! Uh, Elbereth. Gravel flies up from the floor. Beautiful. Let's try the other one. The forked wand. 
The engraving on the floor vanishes. Okay. When the engraving on the floor vanishes, that means it could be one of three... Three? Yeah, three wands. It could be a wand of teleportation that teleported the engraving somewhere else on the level. It could be a wand of invisibility that just made the engraving invisible. Or it could be um, a wand of canceling, which means it erased it. Wands of canceling are very, very dangerous. If you put a wand of canceling in a bag with items, it will blank all your potions, blank all your scrolls, and then you cry many, many tears. Again, this game is a piece of shit. In fact, most people usually have a second bag on their inventory just for wands of cancellation. Because you don't ever want... In fact, the wands... The reason why I didn't put any wands in my bag is because if I put a wand in my bag and it is cancellation, I'm fucked. So this cannot be put in my bag. This is a bad deal. This is a super bad deal. So I'm going to name all types of this forked wand. Um, I'm going to call it Invis Cancel Teleport. I can test it out by simply zapping it at somebody. Um, it's a cool thing. Like, uh, like if you go up to like a water nymph. And you zap it. If it's cancellation, it'll become a regular nymph. It does funny things like that. If the monster turns invisible, it's invisibility. If the monster teleports away, you know it's teleportation. Um, so I can test it out that way. Maybe I will. But anyway, on to the uh, the general store, which is over Nya. This is also annoying because the way to the rest of the dungeon... Oh! Is through here. There's normally a door here blocking you, but somebody mined through it for us. So thank you very much. <laughs> Whoever that was, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, because if we try to open a locked door, the guards in the area will wreck our shit. <laughs> Unless we pick the lock. Well, no, we can't pick the lock when they're near us. If we have a key, it's fine. If we try to pick the lock or break the door, they will attack us. Welcome to Kopaska's General Store. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Kopaska. Now we're going to sell all of our shit. Apply. The bag. Oh, I did it again. Hold on. Uh, take something out. Yes, continue. Because we're just going to drop everything that we're selling, so it's fine. All right. We are dropping. 25 gold. Yes. I'm also tempted to keep the shirt, but I'm not even going to tempt fate. Screw you. Uh, haha. <laughs> We should get unburdened soon. Oh, um, uh, you know what's fun about the water shelties? If you get a bunch of un of uncursed water and one thing of holy water, you could dip the entire stack into that one holy water and make a bunch more holy waters. So that that is basically how you normally get holy water is you keep like one around and then you gather a bunch of other water and just throw the entire stack in there and then you have a shit ton of holy waters. That's how that works. <laughs> but um mathematical equation for uh weight reduction for bags of holding. If it's uncursed, uh it cuts the weight by half. If it's blessed, it cuts the weight uh to one quarter of its normal weight. If it is cursed, it does not um it does not uh, reduce the weight at all. Um, that reminds me, I need to eat this food ration. Um, <clears throat> fucking bye. Um, fuck you. Yes. Uh, I think that's it. All right. Things to keep in the bag permanently. Money. Is it, well, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that now because I might buy stuff here. But I'm going to keep my scrolls in there. 
I'm going to keep these in here. Uh, I'm going to try on the rings. Not putting that teleportation one in there. Um, I'll keep the wand of digging hidden. Um, magic marker will go in there. Pickaxe has to go in there because we're in a store. Magic whistle will go in there. Temov. What is this? Price identify. This is for scrolls, right? It is 80 Zorkmids, and we are charisma level 8. Um, so it is either blank, which it is not, or it's enchant weapon. That's an enchant weapon scroll, y'all. Yank! Thank you! <laughs> enchant weapon ups the uh it ups the uh, enchantment on your weapon so we can make us a plus two longsword. Um actually we're also experienced level five now, so here's something interesting about the Valkyrie. Um with your if you have a longsword and you are level five or above. You can dip your longsword into a fountain and have a chance to have it turn into Excalibur. Excalibur is blessed, uh, rust-proof, uh, corrosion and erode-proof, which means that monsters that spit acid can't corrode it. Um, it is a fantastic weapon. It's what's considered an artifact weapon. Um, I can't use the fountains here. If I use the fountains here, the guards will attack me because I'm fucking with the fountains. But we could go back up to the other fountains in the uh, in the dungeons and use those just as well. And we have a mimic. Mimics show up in stores. They're a pain in the ass. You could usually point mimics out if there's... They usually disguise themselves as an item that is not normally in that store. This is a general store. The general store sells everything. So we have really no way to tell the mimic from one another. There we go. Uh, and, of course, he wants to sell us the corpse now because fuck him. All right. <laughs> you cheap bastard. Wolf's, Wolfsbane will cure lycanthropy. Tripe ration. If I had my pet, that's what I would buy to try and train it. Uh, do I want to go for the luck stone? Do I want to go for the luck stone, guys? We could very well die here. You know what? I'm AC negative four. Fuck it. Let's go for it. I have a pickaxe, which is required. Oh, we got a beholder, y'all. All right, here we go. Let's learn a little bit about beholders, these little fuckers. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, God. Okay. What I just did is what you're supposed to not do with floating eyes. Floating eyes... If you hit them, will stun you. That thing stunned me. Luckily, I broke out of it before these enemies wrecked my shit. Normally, that's an insta-death because all the enemies in the area just converge on you. <sighs> the way to kill one of these things, and we want to kill it because we want to eat its corpse, <laughs> is to throw things at it from afar. All right, so that so I need to. It's on its square now, so I have to wait for it to move. It's gonna move towards us always, so I wait for it to move, pick my shit back up, and throw it at it again. All righty, yeah, there he is. This guy's a speedy little bastard for a for a, a floating eye. Oh, hold on, throw. There we go, it's dead. Do we get the corpse? No. Sometimes you don't get the corpse. If you eat the corpse, you get, um... You, you, uh... Get, uh, what is it called? What is it considered? <laughs> is it telepathy? Yeah, it's considered telepathy, where even if you're blind, you can still see where all monsters are. Very useful. You want to eat floating eye corpses if you can get them. There's a lot of dwarves with pickaxes in this playthrough. No, I don't want to hit you. Okay, so... Oh, here we go. This is a rope golem. 
I need to get through here. I can't because I'm carrying too much. So this is when I go into my bag and whip out the... Uh, Let me whip out my tool. <laughs> I'm wielding the pickaxe. Alright. Now I want to wield my longsword again because I don't want to start hacking at him with the pickaxe because that will make me suck. <laughs> okay. A leash. You could put a leash on your pet to keep them close. Oh, ooh, ooh, here's the egg. Here we go. Beautiful. Alright, that random boulder there means there's a boulder trap somewhere in this area, so I want to be careful because that shit's going to just roll right on top of me. Oh. Oh, God. Please don't tell me Team A is here. Oh, oil skin cloaks. <laughs> um, You know what? I don't need it. I have, I have a cloak of magic resistance. I don't need any other cloak now. <laughs> But um, oil skin cloaks are good because they can help prevent enemies that grab you from grabbing you because you'll just slide out of them. Hence, oil skin cloak. They can be nice to have if you really need one. Uh, we'll take this lamp on the off chance. Oh. What is this? Is this a dwarven king? It's a dwarf king. Pink H's are one of two things. <laughs> they are dwarven kings or they are mind flayers. Yeah. If you play D&D, you know what Mind Flayers are. <sighs> this is why I don't like to be down here too high level, because Mind Flayers will spawn. Okay, see the C here. That is a cockatrice. If we smack it with our bare hands, or pick up its corpse with our bare hands, we will turn to stone, and that is an instant game over. TLDR, stay away from the cockatrice. Mother of God, this cockatrice is not going to leave me alone. Go away. I don't want to deal with you. I can swing it. I can hit it with my sword. <laughs> but, um, I don't really want to deal with it if I, just to prevent me from making mistakes. You know what I mean? Uh, let me see. Uh, we don't need the lamp here. This is a lit area, so I'm going to turn it off. We should be hitting the, the lower level, the lowest level, any minute. Like, it should be the next one. I'm surprised it isn't this one. Here's the way down. Yep! Okay. So let me figure out which uh, level of mine's end this is. I'm pretty sure I know which one it is. I believe this is the one that I need the pickaxe for, which is fine with me because I have a pickaxe. Okay, I am hungry, Shelties. Hungry, I don't care about. When I go weak, that's what I need to start eating. No need to waste my food unless I get into weak status. <laughs> okay, um... <laughs> oh, this might be this one, actually. I don't think it's the one that I thought it was, is it? It is. It's not. Okay. This is a version that's very annoying called Mimic of the Minds. So here's the way it works. There are, I'm looking at the map, one, two, three, four, five, six doors hidden here that could each potentially have the luck stone behind it. They can also potentially have a lodestone behind it. Not L O D E stone like lodestone, but L O A D. Stone, like lodestone. They are cursed when you pick them up, and they weigh ridiculous amounts, and you can't get them out of your inventory. We do not want to pick up lodestones. <laughs> Luckily, lodestones are very easy to test for. How do you do it? Try kicking one. If you kick it, and you go, ow, that fucking hurt, well, guess what? That's a lodestone. Don't pick it up, you idiot. <laughs> um. So... Here we go. Seven secret doors. Behind one of them is a luck stone. Other piles contain lodestones and mimics at random. <laughs> there are two random tools, seven random gems, three other random objects placed throughout the level. The walls are undiggable, as is usual. Alright. So we're going to try these doors. Um, and hope we get lucky. The first door... Oh no. 
Beautiful. Okay, it didn't trigger. Okay, I thought that the level teleporter goes away. All right, I'm not stepping on that anymore. None. No more. No more. No, if you kick a stone that's not a lodestone, it'll go flying across the level. That is how stones work in this game. It's just a stone. It's a, it's a rock, you know. It doesn't hurt if you kick it unless it's a lodestone. All right, so this is where the first one is. So, we're going to uh No. Here we go. The these doors are always locked. I'm going to have to kick it open. There is a mimic, of course. Two violet gems, a green gem, a white gem. It is not here. Uh, lodestone, um, uh, sorry, lodestones and um, and luck stones are gray stones. So when we see a gray stone, that's where we're gonna start wanting to worry. All right, the next closest one is over here. So let's go here. I'm gonna try and avoid these guys. All right, here we go. Valkyrie needs food badly. Now we need to eat. Uh, here we go. Yeah, snakes snakes <laughs> spawn in such number that they start hiding under each other's corpses. So you get this thing of, yo dog, I heard you like snakes, so we found a snake hiding in your snake so you can snake while you snake. Uh, here's another interesting thing. If you type M before you move, you won't attack. Instead, it'll ask them politely to move. So get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> Please and thank you. You can also see, like, even though I can't see these guys, like, I can kind of see them a little bit. Oh, uh, no. Alright, where is this door? Snakes will hide under any corpse, but when, they, when they're all around each other, it's funny because they hide under each other's corpses. <laughs> Yo, dog, I heard you like corpses. Alright, here we go. Kick that shit down. We got a mimic. Alright. We kill the mimic. There are several objects here. Uh, no lodestones or luck stones. So the next one is down here. <coughs> Hold on one second, guys. Okay, let's... Oh! What is that? It's an invisible enemy. Oh, the snake was hidden under the gem. Jesus Christ, these snakes. This is weird. This is a weird setup. I don't need studded leather armor. I believe this is where the door is. Is it? Um. No. It's down further. It's here. Here's another mimic. It's not in here. Great. So the next thing we get to do is go all the way back. <laughs> oh, man. Alrighty. Uh, we just gotta take it slow and be careful. Oh, we're engulfed by the jelly. There are... S yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, there we go. Kill it. Oh! I got splashed by the jelly's acid and died. See, this is net hack, guys. <laughs> Welcome to NetHack. Fucking welcome to NetHack. Fucking unreal. Alrighty, so this is what happens when you die. Get ready to hear this over and over again. Do you want your possessions identified? Yeah, let's see what we had on us. Copper 
Super Dream, hello, welcome to the chat, and thank you for the <laughs> for the RIP. <laughs> Alright, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my longsword got super corroded inside that jelly. Um, that cloak of magic resistance was so nice while it lasted. Chant weapon, firelight, punishment. Okay. Scrolls of punishment, if you read them, um, you will get a ball and chain attached to you. Um, which leaves you unable to move unless you pick up the ball, which is very, like, heavy. <laughs> That's also kind of high up on the um, list of things that your god will cure for you, of the list of, like, DEFCON 1 emergencies that if you pray to your god, they'll help you. Um, but yeah, you don't want to read Scrolls of Punishment. Scrolls of Fire will also light things you have in your... In they'll burn up any scrolls you have and boil any potions you have. So... Yeah. <laughs> you also don't want to read those. Uh, Potion of Restorability, what I believe would... Uh, lower one of our ability scores. See invisible. Oh, increased damage would have been nice. I should have tried those rings on. It would have been hard for me to tell what they were doing, but... Uh, you see next to these wands, you see the 0, 4, and 0, 5. Uh, the, zero, the first number is how many times they've been recharged. And this is how many charges they have left in them as of right now. So this had four charges, this had five. Uh, it was indeed a bag of holding, which I tested out. A uh, regular blindfold, a very uh, cursed oil lamp, a regular pickaxe. And inside the bag we had speed, object detection, gain energy. That magic marker had 84 fucking charges in it. You could have a max of 99. That was such a good magic marker. Ouch. <laughs> oh god, a scroll of confused monster. Another scroll of fire. And a magic whistle. Alright, you were a fighter on level 7 Dwarven Valkyrie. You were lawful on a mission for two you were, who was opposed by Odin and Loki. My strength was 16, 18, 17, 13, 7, 8. It just tells you what the limits are. Uh, my intelligence, wisdom, and charisma are not limited to 20. Uh, they're lower because I'm playing that class. Different classes have different limits. Uh, I was unencumbered. I was wielding a longsword. I was piously aligned, which means that I was in alignment with my god. I was magic protected from the uh, the cloak. I was cold resistant. Um, cold resistance is a natural Valkyrie trait, so I got that just from being a Valkyrie. Uh, that's why the cold one of cold didn't affect me when uh, that cold bolt was hitting me with it. I had infravision that also comes with um, being a Valkyrie. I was stealthy, also comes with being a Valkyrie. Uh, if I was in a, if I walked into a room where enemies were sleeping, I wouldn't have woken them up. That's what stealthy basically means. Uh, I was warded. I don't know what that means. I haven't seen that. I was fast. Again, a Valkyrie thing. Uh, I am dead. Thank you for that. And then I can look at a list of all the creatures that I've killed. <laughs> And a partridge in a pear tree. 70 creatures vanquished. I conduct. I never genocided any monsters. Uh, genociding. Okay. There are things in this game called scrolls of genocide. Uh, cursed. Scrolls of genocide. All right. Well, for, let me do. Let me do it. Let me read. Explain stuff to you as uncursed, blessed, cursed, because it makes more sense that way. Uncursed, you can pick the name of a monster, and it will wipe that monster out from the rest of the game. So, for instance, like I said, mind flayers are nasty. So, I could type in mind flayers. Won't run into any mind flayers for the rest of the game. If it's blessed, I can pick a letter, and every enemy represented by that letter is gone for the rest of the game. That is is super useful because um, there are a lot of really <laughs> nasty enemies um, like for instance um, there's two enemies uh, one's a disenchanter which kills the enchantments on your weapons and armor and one is called a rust monster which rusts any metal on you they're both represented by the same letter and they're both super nasty so they're a good thing to genocide um, all sea creatures are pretty much represented by the same letter. They're good because they could pull you into the water and one-hit kill you, uh, by drowning you to death. 
Uh, so yeah, so that's where that's useful. Cursed Scrolls of Genocide will um will summon a random number of that monster to you. <laughs> so they're super nasty. Also, you could get a wish. You could get a free genocide from um a uh. You could get a free genocide from a uh. A throne, but we didn't find any throne rooms. I never polymorphed an object. There are wands of polymorph where we can polymorph objects into different objects. I had no wishes to use. Do you want to see? Oh, dungeon overview. Oh, here we go. This is what it tells us on there. I found to the general store some fountain stairs down to the numbers mines. I didn't do four, five, six, a grave. Final resting place for Raven. <laughs> All right. So this is telling me what the person is. So the person name was Raven Zero. They were a gnomish wizard. They were female and they were neutrally aligned and they were killed by a bolt of cold. We knew we were killed by a bolt of cold. Um, level 12, you were here. Final resting place for you. Killed by an ochre jelly. Rest in peace, Aradel. Killed by an ochre jelly. You died in the gnomish mines on dungeon level 12 with 3,651 points, 541 pieces of gold, and took 2,780 moves. I was level 7 with a maximum of 79 hit points when I died. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an ad hack. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to end maybe the stream for now, unless there's something that you guys really want to play. But, you know, 7 p.m. tonight, you know, we'll have our normal Mass Effect 2 playthrough. We'll do the Arrival DLC. <laughs> but, um... I need to take a break anyway, so I'm going to end the stream for now. Maybe I'll start up another game, maybe not. I'll stick around in the chat. I would love to hear from you guys whether you enjoyed watching this. Um, because this went so well, I'll put it up on YouTube. I know that I chatted a lot in this video because I was trying to explain how everything works. Uh, it is a very, very in-depth game. But um, if you're watching this on YouTube and you liked it, leave a comment. Tell me so. Maybe we'll play some more. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!